Welcome to the Vet and Create Academy, where we discuss veterinary emergency and critical care and science-based tools for veterinary professionals. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to dive into a fascinating veterinary paper. It might just change how you practice, or at least give you some useful insights from the latest research. Here's what you learn by the end of this video. What the specific differences in lactate and glucose levels are when it comes to diagnosing feline arterial thromboembolism, also known as FATE. How these values relate to concurrent congestive heart failure, or CHF, and what this means for your clinical decision making. Let's jump in. FATE mm -hmm. is a condition where a blood clot travels and lodges in the aortic trifurcation or some other locations blocking blood flow to the limbs. It is a devastating condition, often presenting a sudden paralysis with severe pain in cats. The prognosis for fate is fair to guarded with survival rates around 40 to 50%. And that's only when you exclude cats euthanized at admission. Diagnosing fate can be tricky in certain feline cases especially when orthopedic or neurologic issues might mimic its clinical signs and when pulse palpation is difficult due to patient's confirmation of obesity or arterial hypotension. Definitive diagnosis often requires advanced imaging like angiography or ultrasound, which isn't always available. This is where this study's findings become really helpful. The researchers wanted to find out if the differences in lactate and glucose levels between affected and unaffected limbs could help diagnose fate, spot congestive heart failure, or CHF, and even give clues about their chances of survival. The study included 18 cats diagnosed with fate and 41 control cats presenting for other emergencies like urinary obstruction or gastrointestinal issues. Blood samples were collected from both affected and unaffected limbs in cats that presented within six hours of onset of clinical signs. The blood was collected by direct venipuncture using a 22 gauge needle and syringe. An analysis was performed within one minute of sample collection. Lactate and glucose were measured using handheld lactate meters and glucometers, tools that are readily available in most emergency clinics. And here's what they found. In fate cats, the median delta lactate, in other words, the difference in lactate in affected limb minus unaffected limb was 7.2 millimoles per liter, compared to just 0.1 millimole per liter in control. A delta lactate cutoff of 2.2 millimoles per liter had 100% sensitivity and 95% specificity for diagnosing fate. With respect to the median delta glucose, it was 155 milligram per deciliter or 8.6 millimoles per liter in fate cats, while in controls, it was only three milligram per deciliter or 0.14 millimoles per liter. A delta glucose cutoff of 41 milligram per deciliter or 2.3 millimoles per liter had 100% sensitivity and specificity. So both delta lactate and glucose were highly reliable for diagnosing fate with delta glucose having slightly better specificity. About 72% of fate cats in this study had concurrent CHF, which makes sense given the link between heart disease and thrombus formation in cats. Interestingly, delta glucose, but not delta lactate was significantly associated with heart failure. Cats with a larger delta glucose were more likely to have CHF, making it a helpful tool for prioritizing diagnostics like thoracic x-rays or echocardiography. By the way, you can download a completely free treatment of cardiogenic pulmonary edema cheat sheet in dogs and cats by clicking on the link below. Unfortunately, survival rates in this study were low with only 28% of fake cats discharged alive. Neither delta lactate nor delta glucose predicted survival limit. 
In this study, eight of 13 cats that didn't survive were euthanized, potentially skewing the results. So what does this mean for your practice? Both delta lactate and delta glucose are quick, affordable, and easily accessible tests, especially useful when a diagnosis of fate cannot be confidently made based on physical exam alone. A delta lactate greater than 2.2 millimoles per liter and a delta glucose greater than 41 milligram per deciliter or 2.3 millimoles per liter has been shown to have very high sensitivity and specificity for diagnosing fate. If delta glucose is particularly high, consider heart failure as a likely comorbidity and prioritize further diagnostics to guide treatment. Of course, the study isn't without limitation. The sample size was small, limiting statistical power. The diagnosis of fate in this study was made based on the physical exam and the lack of Doppler flow in the affected limb as opposed to the gold standard, such as in geography or visualization of the clot on ultrasound. In addition, high rates of euthanasia likely influence survival outcomes. Despite these challenges, the findings provide practical, real-world tools to improve how we diagnose and manage fate. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Before you go, I need your help choosing the next topic we'll cover on our channel. Please drop a comment below to vote for one of the papers displayed on the screen. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.